Dr. Nellie Deutsch is an experienced educator, well known for her involvement in online learning and teaching. She's particularly interested in blending technology with face-to-face -face instruction. She has been teaching English as a foreign language in high school and at the university level, and has been involved in teacher training for a number of years. She applies a unique peer learning approach. In her teaching, Deutsch is also known for her work with Moodle, a popular learning management system, and has organized a variety of online courses, workshops, online conferences, and webinars. She is currently teaching Immersive Experiences and Technologies at IMT MSc Program in Immersive Technologies at the International Hellenic University Distance Education. She has a Doctor of Education, Ed.D., in Educational Leadership specializing in Curriculum and Instruction. She researched instructor experiences in integrating technology in blended learning programs in higher education. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here among colleagues. And um, as you notice, technology is not perfect. Things go wrong. And I think that's what makes it um, absolutely amazing. Just, well, that's the topic. We can go on to the next slide. In case you missed uh, the introduction by Nelly uh, Avatar using DID, uh, you can get the information. It's listed here if you want to know more about me as well as the presentation, which is also available. You can go on to the next slide, please. There's a QR code here on the left for the presentation slides that uh, I'm sure someone has already added to the uh, chat box. There's also a chat GPT that I created at the uh, inspiration of Amini, who created hers. And I thought if she could create one, so can I. So um, I created a chat GPT AI for ELT as well as seven others. And I also created a video so that you can create your very own GPT as well. So that's out there in YouTube in my channel. And there's also Moodle there where you can take courses for free. Go on to the next one. Right, so the focus of the talk is uh, ChatGPT 4.0, which is completely free right now. Uh, if you didn't know, try it. And you can use all the uh, GPTs for free as well, which is wonderful, and I'm really happy about that. I'll be speaking about ChatGPT 4.0 for teachers as well as for students. And I'll also be discussing other tools that go beyond uh, ChatGPT. Next. If you can go on to the next slide, thank you. I'm not screen sharing because I'm having problems right now. The agenda, next slide, is the following. It's quite um, full, lots of uh, resources that are available. I won't be going through them, but you'll have a chance to do it on your own, which is what I'm hoping you will do after, when you have time after the conference. So the agenda is take online courses. That's what I suggest. Use ChatGPT 4.0 instead of using so many others and uh, trying to uh, avoid the headache, as was mentioned before. To avoid headache, just try to use ChatGPT 4.0. And, um, and you can read the rest of it, transformative potential of generative AI tools, in an online course uh, where I teach. Uh, benefits of AI and TESOL, how do AI tools do it? Chat GPT 4.0 for students, for teachers, and then um, their benefits, personalized language, exercises, conversational practice with partners, writing assistance and feedback, story generation, real-time translation, pronunciation, improvement, reading comprehension, gamified content, generation, AI generated activities for TESOL, and unexpectedly, we'll also look at artificial stupidity and the action that we need to take so that, uh, well, you'll get more information on that. My recommendation and references at the end. So we're gonna go quite quickly. So please feel free to continue with the slides. Right, next, take online courses. In my opinion, and from my experience, you can go on to the next slide. 
the best way to actually avoid the headaches and learn, practice, and apply uh, all these AI tools, generative AI tools, is to take online courses versus Zoom. I know this is a Zoom meeting and you'll get ideas and so on, but for sustained learning, practice time, peer learning, videos, you can go on to the next slide. These are all documented with research as to why take an online course for learning, knowledge retention, active learning feedback, and reflective learning. You are not on the clock, so to speak, as you are in a Zoom meeting where we have to hurry up and uh, try to absorb. You don't have to absorb. So just sit back, let the information go through, and at the end of uh, the conference, go over the slides. Next one, please. Another aspect is resource availability. This slide will be available for as long as you wish, and you'll be able to take online courses and get the material for as long as you wish, 24 seven. On Zoom, as I said, you're limited because you can't really learn. You can just get um, you know, ideas and uh, be bombarded, so to speak, with information but that's not necessary. There are online courses, free online courses that are available. Uh, there's also an online course uh, that took place last year with Amini, uh, Doris Malero, and I. Um, it was uh, at AI for ELT. It was part of the Electronic Village Online, which is a TESOL Call IS project. And you're welcome to join this year from January to February for five weeks for free. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, go on, please. It also gives you a chance to collaborate and learn with others and socialize, which is so important because it makes learning fun. Um, my chat GPTs that I mentioned before at the inspiration of Amini, which I created, uh, please go on to the next slide. They're available for free and you can access them. There are the links, the names, what is called Integrating Technology Assistant, AI for ELT that I mentioned, Blended Learning Guide, Plagiarism Checker for Academic Integrity. Next slide. And three more, Canvas. If you're using Canvas, anyone here using Canvas, you can raise your virtual hand or say yes in the chat. Uh, Canvas Instructor, I think many are using it. Thank you for raising your hands, great. And I created a WebQuest wizard because I'm offering a free four week online course in July using my WebQuest wizard. So you get a chance to create a WebQuest using this wizard in a couple of, uh, I guess, hours, but the course is four weeks, so we could have a lot of fun doing it. And then there's also a GPT as it's called. These are all completely free when you're on ChatGPT 4.0 called online courses. Everything about how to create online courses if you're interested and you should be because they're wonderful. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, please. So the transformative potential generative AI in TESOL is absolutely amazing. It is mind blowing and it could give us a headache, which is why I suggest taking courses, next one, so that you learn, practice and apply directly in your classes. And I suggest whatever you learn, you apply it right away because that's the only way you'll get the confidence that you need. So why is it transformative? Because it changes our perspectives on instruction and learning, how we learn, we ourselves as teachers. And, and then we realize that our students also learn. They're learners. They're not really, um, you know, people who are sitting in front of us in a live class or, um, you know, in a virtual class. They're not really um, just names or people. They're learners just like us. And we're all learning together. So it's a chance, you can go on to the next slide, to learn together and experience the potential of uh, generative AI in TESOL. Go on to the next one. Notice here, 
our pedagogy actually changes. And you'll see that the more you use it, and if you're interested in change, this is the way to do it. If you're tired of the old ways of doing things and you want to be inspired and you want to do things differently, this is how you do it. You um, plunge in, you take a chance, and you try it with your students. Ask them what they think. Share their feedback. And as I said, learn together. You can go on to the next one. And it's true. I think Shauna mentioned it as well, that uh, we just got an upgrade as teachers. Our lives are going to be a lot easier. I know my life is. I am managing to do so much more. And I've always done a lot. I've always been a multitasker with mindfulness on the side because I do meditate for at least 30 minutes every day, if not more. But I find that I have more time and, and it's so much fun because I've got a colleague. I've got someone who's there 24 seven to support me, to help me, to, to answer every single question, all my queries right there with, uh, of course, in my case, it's uh, ChatGPT 4.0. You can go on to the next one. Notice the references there. You'll get a chance to also read and get some background information. So again, learn, practice, and apply. And I use Moodle for my courses. I have my own Moodle sites. Uh, if you can go on to the next one. I also use it at the university. And notice these, this is a course, the typical course, but I do this in all my courses, including the one that Amini, Doris Molero, and I uh, gave as part of TESOL Call IS in the Electronic Village Online. For the orientation and introduction, I, use, I always use video screen recorders, but I use DID, which you saw at the beginning, where the uh, photo, it's an old photo from 2015, in case you're interested, um, using DID, but there's also Hey Jen, which is even better in my opinion, because um, you don't need to have so many credits as you do with DID. And there's Talking Head, which is also nice. For personalized uh, language ex exercises, I use Duolingo with my students. I also use it myself because I'm learning Spanish. And it's amazing. You know, being a language learner really helps, I think, so that we get an idea of what our students go through. And for conversation practice partners, uh, I use Mango languages. You can go on. I'm just going to go through these um, quickly. Whoever is screen sharing, you can go on to the next one. And for writing assistance and feedback, besides Moodle and what it has to offer, I use Write and Improve Grammarly. And I encourage my students to use Grammarly. I don't personally use it, but I use it just to get an idea of what students are facing, if there are any issues. Uh, Quillbot and Deep L Write, which is absolutely amazing. You can also use it with your email and it translates um, as well. Story generators, uh, if you click on that link when you get the presentation, when you open it up, you'll be able to get, uh, not I don't even know if hundreds, but at least um, maybe a hundred and more story generators that are available that you can use. If you go on to the next, uh, please. And notice Google Translate. Um, is amazing. I don't know if any of you have used uh, Google Translate uh, in the past. It is changing. There is also the ability to uh, pronounce, learn how to pronounce words uh, using both American and uh, other pronunciations. Uh, there's Read Aloud on Mood Poodle on Moodle. There's also Read Theory, Level Up that I use on Moodle, and I use Book Creator for the showcase and Reflex. So that's something you can take a look at later on more deeply if you can go on a little faster here. Um, yes. Right. So the benefits of AI and TESOL. We don't need a bot in the class because we're talking about generative AI and about not about AI, but that could be the future. Something to think about how we um, would use a bots. Go on to the next one, please. So these are the benefits, and I'll be going through them with uh, 
AI tools that you can use, personalized language exercise, conversational practice, partners I mentioned before, writing assistants, story generators, go on, please. Uh, Real-time translation, as I mentioned uh, with Google, but there are others as well. Pronunciation improvement, virtual classroom, teaching assistants, and gamified content generation. So you might ask at this time, so who needs me <laughs> as a teacher? I mean, students can learn without me, but that's not true. And you'll see why when we get to uh, the stupidity of AI. Uh, the next one. So don't get discouraged. They need us more than ever. So how do AI tools do it? Let's take a look and get some background here. If you can go on to the next slide. So of course, um, data collection and analysis is part of it. And it collects, I don't know if you're using an LMS, but I use Moodle and um, there's a tracking system and an AI embedded in it where it collects data on students' performance so that we know what happens with the quizzes, assignments. Teachers are getting reports and a lot more information about uh, students' improvement, development, where they're stuck and so on. There's also personalized learning profiles where we can learn about in students' individual needs and learning uh, styles or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and their personalities too. What do they like? What do they not like? Uh, what topics do they prefer? Everything about them that you can get through uh, generative AI, adaptive learning algorithms, uh, where we can learn about difficulties that they're having. Go on to the next slide. And feedback, of course, recommendations and gamifications. Go on, please. And predictive analysis. Now, this is really important. Uh, trying to figure out um, what the outcomes are. Uh, can we predict uh, where the student is? Well, we know where the student is today. Can we predict where the student will be and when? <coughs> in a month, a week, and so on. And then content generation. Where we get lots of um, exercises, language exercises. If you could go on, please. and monitor their progress. As I said, Moodle does this in the LMS, but we can also do it by adding the information and getting um, a generative AI tool such as ChatGPT to uh, ask, assess and tell us a little more about what's going on. Uh, go on, please. Right, so now we're gonna go through each one of these and the tools. So we're gonna go quite quickly if that's possible, please. Uh, just go through it, please. Next slide. Okay, these are the tools. I mentioned some, but not all of them. Next, please. More tools, some I mentioned, and some are new right now. And now I'd like to go through ChatGPT. Um, okay, so next one. Yeah, so ChatGPT, 4.0 for students and for teachers. Uh, these are the different applications and skills that students uh, can benefit from. Notice with ChatGPT uh, 4, they can also 4.0, they can record themselves, they can also listen to the text, they can have conversations. It's still being developed right now, so this may take a month or two but it's, um, it's in development already, it's in beta, they're testing it out right now, but they'll be able to, for example, speak in their native language and, uh, and they choose the language on ChatGPT 4.0 and then they'll get um, responses in English or vice versa. So they can play around with that. At least it gives them confidence so that they feel that, uh, they may be using their native language, but they're getting English as well. But they can play around with it. They don't have to use 100% their native language. And they could use a bit of the target language and play around with that until they get confident. You can go on to the next one. 
Okay, so these are some more skills. Notice listening, speaking, pronunciation, of course, role playing, all this they can do with uh, ChatGPT 4.0. Next one, please. And then reading, I'm not going to go through it. Next, please. Writing with the prompts. Go on, please. And now for teachers, okay, these are uh, the skills the teachers can um, organize and develop for the class, listening, they can get scripted dialogues, and a prompt could be write a dialogue between two friends discussing their weekend plans. They can ask for different levels, so it doesn't have to be too difficult or too easy, and they can customize it, tailor it to their students so that each student can have a separate um, dialogue. It's that easy and really, really fast. To do. Something that would take us hours and days and we wouldn't bother, we would teach the whole class and that's it. Now we can customize our uh, activities to suit individuals, <laughs> individual students, or they can work in teams, of course. Uh, go on to the next one, that's with listening. Next uh, skill. speaking, create a role-playing scenario where one student is a doctor and so on. Go on to the next one, please. Okay, speaking, go on, please. There are lots of prompts here that you can try out and I suggest you try them out. Then there's reading, short passages, longer passages. You can also upload a PDF file or you can ask ChatGPT 4.0 to generate a PDF file, and then you can actually print it out. Go on, please. You can ask for the number of questions that you wish, the levels on any topic. Go on, please. Okay, continued with the writing prompts, creative writing, and so on. Go on, please. Next. <laughs> And create images. This is Doris's part. Yeah, you can go back a bit. Uh, creating images because images um, are a great way to learn. Okay, they can describe an image of a futuristic city. They can come up with images. They can go from uh, writing to the image or from the image to the writing. And it's really a wonderful way for them to have fun. And they love it because they come up with amazing images and uh, descriptions. Go on, next one, please. And conversations, as I mentioned, uh, I'll show you a few uh, tools that you can use. Go on, next one, please. And this is the new, it's the latest, okay, it just came out. If you're an Apple user, how many of you are Apple users and have an iPhone? If you could just uh, raise your hand there, so I, virtual hand, so I can get an idea. Oh, I got a real hand there, okay, Shauna. All right, great. So notice, uh, I don't know if you've tried it. How many of you have tried it? It's hello, GPT, because Apple has added, this is really exciting for me. Apple has added um, GPT, um, ChatGPT 4.0, and it'll be using ChatGPTs in everything. So now we've got our phone and all we have to do is speak and have a conversation on our phone. This is great for students because they prefer their smartphones uh, to um, the desktop. So it's really great for them. Uh, as I mentioned before, the next stage is for them to uh, speak back and forth with different accents if they want a you know, British accent or even London, a local accent or Australian and so on. So they could do that and have a lot of fun. Uh, go on to the next one. And uh, these are the tools um, for conversation. I don't know if you're familiar with any of these. Go on to the next one. Um, I've used them all with my students and they were very happy with them. Next one, please, next. And these are writing assistance tools. I mentioned some of them. Go on, please. Okay, go on, next one. Deep L Write, that, that's the one that, is uh, absolutely amazing and I highly recommend it if you haven't tried it yet. Next, you can put your hands down unless you wanna ask a question. And Hemingway, uh, there's Pro Writing Aid and Hemingway Editor, which is completely free and absolutely amazing. Try it because um, 
it is very, very effective. It improves readability. Uh, next, Reverso and Language Tool. I think I mentioned Reverso. Go on, please. Google Docs. Now, Google Docs, I don't know when you've tried it lately, but it has Gemini right in it. So that if um, your students are writing in their Google Docs, they, they, they have help. You don't have to work alone anymore. Um, Google Docs doesn't let you know when they develop new things. So you have to check it out once in a while. But that's the latest and it works. There are lots of uh, Chrome extensions as well that you can add to your email, for example, where you can translate um, emails, messages, if you get an email from, you know, in a foreign language, you can have that translated to using AI tools. So Google's doing a lot as well. And there's Slick Write, thank you. Next. Go on, story generators. There are lots of tools. Go on, please. Okay, these are the tools. You can try them out. Epic is amazing. Uh, some are for young learners. Go on, please. Next slide. Some are for young learners. Some are for adult learners. Next. And real-time translation, which is so important for our students using their phones, because that's what they like to use. Next, please. These are the tools that they can use. Next. Okay. There's also Microsoft Translator and Pronunciation. Okay, go on, please. I think you were good. Pronunciation, next. These are some of the tools, a little faster. Yes, so we uh, don't time out. Next, please. Okay, gamified content, next. These are the tools that you can use. Go on, next, next. Quizalize, by the way, these are amazing. They all have AI embedded in them right now. Uh, quizzes as well, go on, as well as uh, Quizlet, go on, next. So try them out if you haven't tried them lately. Next, please. Next. All right, next, please. All right, so uh, these are amazing AI-generated activities for Tieslers, for us. I love Twee, and it's hard for me to see anything else, but there's Ego and Roshi AI. Go on, please. And next. Now we're going to talk about artificial stupidity and actions that we can take as teachers because they need us. This is where we come in. So we have to be knowledgeable because they're going to be using AI tools anyways, whether we teach them about them or not, they'll be using them. So you have to be aware of that um, what a, this is an article, an amazing article that just came out in 2024, uh, in June. AI, stupidity, and these are the features, lacks human sensitivity. And this is important for us to help our students become aware of. There's also bias in the outcomes and hallucinations. And if you push too much, it'll hallucinate no matter what. Um, so our students need to know this and uh, go on next context is also a problem and inability to handle, as I mentioned before, extreme situations, dehumanization of students. <laughs> now, this is a, it's a fact. OK, we have to help our students understand that we're not talking about human beings even though it may seem that way. And we say, thank you, AI, and have a good day. And we talk to it, but it's not a human being. Uh, next, um, and over-reliance. I, I think I'm glad you stopped here. Over-reliance on AI. Uh, we have to encourage our students to question, be critical, and analyze the output very, very important. There are also ethical concerns. I think there'll be a talk on this later on today. So let's go on to the next um, slide. All right, so these are my uh, conclusions. So we're ending. They can overwhelm and don't try to learn too many AI tools. Focus on ChatGPT 4.0. That's all you need. 
because you will be overwhelmed. And when you're confident and you feel that, okay, I want some more, then learn some more. And they're all here, most of them. Encourage students to practice the four skills using the GPTs. And there's so many of them. You can search for them, explore the GPTs on ChatGPT 4.0, and they're all there for students and for you. Go on, next one. And remember that the greatest rewards in life come from learning through exploration and discovery. Don't be afraid. We're all afraid. I'm afraid. We're afraid of technology, of, of the unknown, of taking new steps. But it's worthwhile to take those steps. Uh, go on. So my recommendation is um, it wasn't taken from Mac Gary, Dr. Mac Gary, who's 103 years old today. Uh, I mean, in 2024, and you can find her on YouTube. And, um, and she's amazing. And she says that she advises us to live with love. And that's what I try to do. And I'm sure you do too with your students. Listen with love, speak with love, learn with love and teach and share with love. And your life will be a whole lot easier. Uh, next is the final the references, you can go through them very quickly. And then the final slide, yeah, go through them quickly. And the final slide is ChatGPT4. What? That's wonderful. One more. So I guess that's Emily. Um, that's what I have on my computer too. So once again, there are the presentation slides. If you've got your phone, just uh, take a photo and the ChatGPT AI for ELT, or you can find me by going into ChatGPT 4.0 and exploring, just write the name Nelly Deutsch with a Y. And that's it, thank you. I know it was long, but I'm glad that you'll have the resources because I think that's important because I believe learning never stops. And if you take a look at them, you'll be able to continue learning and I'll be happy. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so thank you. much, Dr. Nelly. And it didn't actually feel like 40 minutes at all. It, the time just flew by, yes. So um, we got a couple of questions. And first of all, we got so many questions about, can we get the link for the presentations? So I think, uh, was it Mohammed already shared the link and I will copy thank and you. paste it soon. And the second question from um, Kara is, is it necessary? I'll, I'll uh, type it in the chat box. Is it necessary to teach learners how to write prompts? They could learn how to write prompts by using ChatGPT 4.0. Um, you know, um, when it comes to information, I think that um, teachers, um, have more time off because you don't have to teach information anymore. It's all out there. Uh, what you can do is compare it. So you can ask them, you can ask, you can practice using different prompts, uh, ask them to share the prompts, and then everybody can be learning together. But I don't think the teachers uh, have to be the, uh, the lecturers, uh, especially not English language teachers. That's not what we would do. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat box or please raise your virtual hand. Um, Yujang, there's one more question. Um, yes. So uh, Dr. Duerji, you mentioned ChatGPT 4.0 in your presentation and Samuel Song um, is saying, I just checked ChatGPT 4.0 on Apple, but it seems to be a fee-based service. And the subscription is $15 uh, per month, et cetera. Um, is there any other suggestion? Would you suggest a free one? It's free. 4.0 is free. Um, I suggest, uh, is it Samuel? Is that the person? Contact me and I'll, I'll, um, I'll try to help him out. Thank you. Because it shouldn't cost anything. It's free. And we have three more minutes, but there was another question that Dr. Doris Malero um, already answered, but I thought that maybe you would have 
um, a different insight. Is there an AI tool that in which I upload the image and will describe it for me? And this is by Khira Zahud. Oh, yeah. Chat GPT 4.0 will do that as well. But there are also uh, GPTs that you can explore and find. So if you're looking for something, you just write what you're looking for in the search engine of Chat GPT 4.0, explore GPTs, and, uh, and you'll find it. So you no longer have to, um, you know, really look for things. You just have to ask. So asking is important. That's the prompt. All right, thank you. And last question is by Lisa Levine, and she is asking about: Do you recommend Twe? T W oh, I love it. Yeah, I mentioned Twe because I and I said I love it. That's that's my preferred one. Um, it's great, but again, today with ChatGPT 4.0, and uh, you can actually summarize YouTube videos. It can do everything that we can. I'm afraid that uh, ChatGPT 4.0 is going to put a lot of um, other AI tools out of business, which you know um, they're going to have to do something about it because it's now free uh, with the GPTs, which are like plugins. They're applications that are involved. So I don't know what's going to happen. So Twi may just um, lose out, but I like it. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. Elka Koshka is also cheering <laughs> for Twi here. <laughs> um, all right. I think uh, that is all. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Harris. you.